before we start, I should tell you this. It's eight o'clock here, but it's midday for you, isn't it? Yes. So, since it's eight o'clock at night and I've been in work all day, I've put my kid to bed, just for you, this is a nice 26-year-old leg of Ulin <laughs> in your right. You know me too well, huh? Yeah. 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 So I've put myself scotch there. Yeah, I had uh, I uh, I had a I had a a couple last night. I think I'm gonna pass today, actually. So. I'll just have a slip. I don't want to be slurring on yeah, you. There you go. But, well, at least you're drinking yeah. something like 26 year old. At least you're drinking it neat. So, uh, so I'm. This is uh, um, uh, we're on recording. This is Richard Nikolai, Free the Animals. So uh, thanks for all you readers and, and watchers out there. I am uh, I'm speaking with uh, Ricky Graham across the pond in the UK. Uh, we're just uh, we're just um, finishing up with lunch here, and he's already finished with dinner. So uh, got the kid to bed and, and everything. So Ricky has is an, is another one in the uh, the series of uh, you know really awesome stories. And by, by my calculation, Ricky, it's it's what about ninety pounds ish that you uh, have lost. And I you yeah. probably put on a little muscle since then as well. Uh, yeah, I lost about ninety pounds. And since then, I think I've probably put on about, I haven't sort of measured recently, but it's probably about a good sort of 10 pounds that's come back on just from uh, following a good exercise plan. So, now, uh, uh, Ricky has an interesting story. And, and, and by my calculation here, looking at your, uh, you know, I have a, I have a fairly uh, big story from Ricky here. And he's gonna he's gonna tell it, but just some of the highlights. It's it's about ninety pounds so far, with a little bit more uh, uh, muscle. And uh, it looks like you got started in this. Uh, just about, you're almost coming up on two year anniversary here in uh, in uh, October, correct? Yeah. Do you know what? October nineteenth. Yes. I'll never forget that date. It kind of it's stuck in my mind. You know, the day that I sort of kind of decided to go. Do you know what? Ugh, no more. I can't do this any longer. Yeah. Well, so Killing let's t take us back. Take us back to uh, uh, <clears throat> when uh, you know you you grew up. Uh, you grew up, you know, like a normal you know kid, uh, uh, healthy, played sports and everything. So, what at what age were you? You're thirty seven now, I guess. So, at what age were you when you noticed, man, I'm starting to pack on the pounds, and and why did that happen? Because of me, bad choices, not thinking about what I was doing. I was a pretty healthy kid, you know, played sports at school, did a lot of rugby. My parents fed us well. My dad was a butcher, you know, so we always had good produce, you know. He yeah. grew up with that ethos of nose to tally in. We did the best that they knew from, you know, as everyone knew back then. We ate a few grains, we ate lots of potatoes, um, but that was what people knew back then. So, you know, it was pretty good. I left school and I started working in recording studios and recording studios are long hours, coffee, cigarettes, uh, the occasional drink thrown in um, or the occasional drink drowned in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I lived that lifestyle. Dark, dark, dark room. Yeah, no daylight. Um, working no windows, right? You don't have windows day. in recording studios. Sorry? You don't have windows in recording studios, typically. No, not a lot. I, I was lucky enough to work for a really good studio that did have some daylight, but you were still locked in the room and never got into it. But, you know, it'd be 16, 18 hours a day. You'd eat on the fly really quickly. You'd be eating pizza, Chinese, Indian, whatever takeaway was good that day, and drinking more coffee than the average person could consume in a week daily. Uh-huh. I just to, just to keep on that, you're keeping yeah. on that intense because the whole thing is is designed to be an intense thing. So, so in mm. addition to the to the bad food, the the long hours, no sunlight, no exercise, you're in a chair. Uh, it's it's a stressful environment because recording studios are expensive. So it's like we've got to get this done, right? Is am I right? I was, you know, I was, I was working in, you know, what was considered to be one of the best studios in the world. So it had to be right. It was stressful, but look, don't get me wrong. It was the best job in the world. I hang on, hung around with my heroes, with rock stars, and I made records with them. But you know, a few years into this, I think I must have been about 22, 23, 
and I bumped into an old girlfriend, and she was like, oh, "Wow, you put some weight on." And <coughs> was, oh, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> <Thanks>. it's it. <laughs> um, But I, 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 I was eating kind of well, kind of. By that time, I'd become vegetarian. So I thought I was eating really good. The plot eating... always thickens, doesn't it? <laughs> oh man, yeah. But you know, I I I lived on bread, pasta, takeouts. I tried to be as healthy as I can, eating lots of fruit. And I used to drink fruit juice like it was going out of fashion. You know, uh -huh. a good liter of fruit juice a day sometimes. Healthy fruit juice, yeah. Mm, yeah, and yeah. along with your healthy whole grains. Yeah, and you know, 20, 30 cigarettes a day as well. So it was, you know, it slowly crept up and crept up. Mm -hmm. And I got to that point where I kind of accepted it. You know, I didn't exercise. I ate well, but I sat at a mixing desk. Uh -huh. hours, day in, day out. Didn't exercise. And that was why I was heavy. Yeah. But I accepted it. That was who I was. And you know? you you were you were you were at a, you got to a point where you weren't even weighing yourself, but oh. you were and you're you 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 would you got to a point where you uh, uh, just were refused to buy the next uh, biggest size of, of waist <laughs> size in your pants. Yeah, and, you know what, I, and you're trying to avoid cameras. Yeah, do you know what, I got to my sort of mid late twenties and. I knew I was getting big, but it wasn't too silly. But then as I got to my 30s, as I hit 30, you know where it is, it suddenly it just catches you up. But I got to that point where I was like wearing 38 waist inch jeans and they were tight. And I, there was no way I was going to buy a 40 inch waist. It just wasn't going to happen. So I fit in there. But I got so unhappy about how my body was that I'd only buy clothes online. Didn't want to go into a shop. Didn't want to try stuff on. I knew what size I was. It was extra large or extra, extra fucking large. <laughs> so I could order it. I didn't want to go into that shop and try them on and admit to that assistant, yeah, I need the fat bastard size, please. Um, yeah. it, it, was, it, it just became a really close darkness within myself. That mm -hmm. It just became part of me and I didn't think about it. And I carried on as normal. And on the exterior, I was happy and it was all, you know, everything was okay. Mm -hmm. But you know what, deep down inside, I wasn't happy with how I looked, I wasn't happy with how it caught me up. It really, it kind of knocked my confidence a bit. Um, I would kind of be happy sitting in the studio, locking myself away from the world, because then it was just me, the band, the music, that was enough, and people would accept me as I am anyway. Yeah. But, you know, as time goes on, it gets worse, and it becomes a bit of a cycle, and it just became that bit where I knew that on the exterior I was becoming a bit moody and a bit less of who I really was. What what, um, what was the tipping point for you? What what uh, what got you to say, all right, I'm I'm going to do something? And we're you still working at the recording studio. You 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 work for Apple now, correct? Yeah, I work for Apple now. But I got to a point where you know I was living in London with my partner, and we decided to start a family. We had a couple of miscarriages, which wasn't the easiest thing to get through. So we decided to change our life and leave London. I kind of, at the time, had decided, you know what, the industry's changing, it's getting harder and harder to make records the way I want to and to have that career. You know, for one of just wanting something different as well, it was like, let's take a break and let's move away. So we moved up to the north of England, where my other half was from and her family were there, so it made sense. We could start a family, on-tap babysitters, you know. Yeah. And yeah. we moved out to the coast, you know, live near the sea now, it's beautiful. But as we came up here, I kind of didn't know what I was gonna do. Mm. You know, no career plan, no sort of, tried a different couple of things. And I think that made me a bit unhappier as well, not knowing which way I was gonna go. So I carried on, you know, eating the same, not exercising. I'd got so out of the habit of exercising that it didn't occur to me that now that I live by the coast, let's buy that bike, start a bit of cycling maybe, mm -hmm. do a bit more walking. Didn't happen. So it's kind of carried on as normal. But then 
I just I, I had some weddings to go to, mm-hmm. and for two of them, I was the best man. And that was it. I was going to have to get my photo taken. And I had avoided that for years. Um, I had a little thing when anyone would take a picture, I'd stick two fingers up like that because then I knew they wouldn't be able to use that picture. <laughs> now, there you go. It's like a really embarrassed person. Uh-huh. Um, I had to go for suit fittings for morning suits. And my best friend I'd known since I was a kid, it was a full morning suit, waistcoat. I was so big that I couldn't have a full waistcoat. I had to have one of those backless waistcoats. Oh, okay. Man, killed me. So, so just, it, it wasn't a matter of how how tight you're going to make the strap in the in the in the back of the. the you know, listen, you put the back on, and it's just yeah. things will tie you in, Sonny. Yeah. Oh. The realization mm-hmm. that that's how big I'd got really hit home. And at and this, then, point, this, you're, you're at, at one point you weighed yourself, and I think you said uh, uh, 263, 265? 262. 262. And, and how, how, what's your height? I'm five, just shy of 5'11". Okay. So, yeah, that's, that's actually even a little bit more than I got, because I got up to around two, 240, and I'm 5'10". So, you know, hmm. so, yeah, that's, uh, I, I can, I, wow, yeah, that was... You know, the thing that got me was seeing the pictures afterwards. You know, everyone put their pictures on Facebook. Everyone sent us pictures, and I could see them, and I knew everybody could see them. So this and is all. Was, yeah, this is only. Uh, this is only a brief two years ago, right? Roughly. Yeah, and if what was going through my head about how I looked, it gave me the nagging feeling of, oh my God, what were my friends thinking? Friends that know me all my life, and then suddenly they're seeing me the way I'm seeing myself in a picture and it was just like oh man I really have to do something yeah. but what am I going to do and so so you so so you finally get to this point and uh, um, you uh, uh, you you said you read a story I guess online about someone who'd lost uh, 80 pounds uh, with a caveman diet and you got into the you got you fired up google right Oh, but yeah, it was a local paper that started it off. I opened the paper, story about this accountant whose personal trainer convinced him to try the caveman diet. And he'd lost a load of weight, and he was going to run a half marathon a year later. And I just looked at it and thought, wow. So I've tried the pasta, I've tried the low-fat foods, I've been drinking skim milk, and, you know, nothing was working. Yeah. And I read it, and something rang true. So... I got up close to Google, and I found a website, Caveman Power, by a guy called Matt Emery. Right. And yeah. it's this it, he, hasn't, he hasn't been. He hasn't. I haven't. I. He hasn't been blogging for a, for quite a long time, but he. But I. Can, I see his uh, forum still has some activity in it. Yeah, the forum's still really active, but you know, I, really, I didn't even saw much of him even when I started reading the site. Uh huh. But he has a three pay a three stage plan mm-hmm. in how you ease yourself into the caveman diet and the caveman lifestyle and it kind of rang true so we'd been to another wedding <laughs> it was the last of the three saw the photos and just died and just realized okay this is it Gonna do so it. the wedding was on the Saturday and then on the Monday that was the October 19th I was at home with my son um, my partner had gone back to work and I was being stay-at-home dad at the time. So I was on my own, which made it really easy. And I just got up in the morning and it was like, okay, no more. This is it. So I fasted, which is stage one, through the day. In the evening, everyone came back and I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. <laughs> By the way. Oh, great. <laughs> and I ate what we normally ate that night. And it was a nice big bowl of pasta. And then within 10 minutes, I was like, I'm ready for bed now. Yeah. I'm sleepy. And so what was said about carbs being sedatory, it was like, okay, yeah, this does ring true. So I went for two weeks 